Hello viewer and welcome to Spotlight here on Hope TV where you look and live. And on Spotlight we always do our very best to bring to you persons who have perspectives that inspire and also uh, direct us in a progressive way. And on this edition of Spotlight we are honored, we are glad to have with us Honorable Martha Karua who is not new to us at all because she's been on the political front line for years and she is the chair of NAC Kenya and also an advocate of social justice uh, here in Kenya and again uh, Martha welcome to Spotlight. Thank you. Uh, we are happy to have you and uh, happy to uh, know that you made time for this conversation so looking forward to having this conversation with you. Thank you for having me. And uh, every time that um, uh, we see you, there is a certain positivity that comes, there's a certain energy that comes, because you come along with uh, you know, principles, you, you represent principles, you represent uh, strong, strong convictions, you know, uh, and uh, of course there are many um, things that support that, uh, so you come across that way, and sometimes uh, we have uh, people wondering, you know, where does Martha drew her inspiration from? I mean, where does this strength, this uh, principled leadership, this strong conviction, where does it come from, your inspiration, Mark? I think you've just said it. Mm -hmm. It comes from within me, mm -hmm. from my conviction. So I can say I move mm -hmm. with the courage of my convictions. Mm -hmm. And that's where my inspiration comes from. Okay. Because if it's things you believe in, things you have pondered in your mind, and you think this is the right way, then I will be able to stand firm on that foundation. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, uh, sometimes when people talk about inspiration, mm -hmm. they cite names in the past yeah. or contemporaries. You would hear people mention Gandhi, for instance. Yeah. Others would mention uh, Hillary, for instance. Others would yeah. mention Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, who are some of the names, uh, whether they're in the past or in the contemporary life, that inspire you? If you're talking of the mentors, mm -hmm. I will begin with my mother, mm -hmm. my paternal grandmother, my father. Mm -hmm. Those are the earliest figures that were around me. Those are the figures that influenced most of who I am. Reinforcement has come from the outside world, mm -hmm. and there are many, many people one can cite. Okay. Here at home, mm -hmm. there are many people I saw as I grew up. I saw uh, women like uh, Phoebe Asio. I saw Julia Ojambo, Grace Ogot, people you saw from far, Professor Wangari Madai, people you saw from far, and they resonated with what you are doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but if the formative years, like I've said, I got my inspiration right from home. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or, yeah. yeah, you know, homes we, have many dynamics. We actually mm -hmm. sometimes forget that our first inspiration comes from those who nurture mm -hmm. us mm -hmm. and those around us okay. in the village. Yeah. yeah, and of course, homes have many dynamics. Yeah. You know, yeah. when you mention um, mother, when you mention you know that just homestead. Yeah. Um, of course, we are again interested to hear because we've had people saying, oh. My mother was a no-nonsense mother. Yeah. My mother was a spiritual woman. Uh, my father was this or the other. What are some of those qualities that uh, hung on to you at that early age that have become, um, have traveled with you through the years? Uh, I think all around, mm -hmm. there was emphasis for hard work, for honesty, for, uh, you know, respect, mm -hmm. respecting your elders respecting others and the sense of community because if you grow in a con you know in a kenyan society especially our days my days there was a very strong sense of community mm -hmm. which we are gradually eroding mm -hmm. caring for one another so looking out for the weak and helping them mm -hmm. we saw those days that if you are walking on the road and you find an aged person carrying a basket or a load, you're actually supposed as a child to request to assist. You see? If you find them fetching water, you're supposed to help them carry. Mm -hmm. 
So you grow with that sense of community. You're being sent to an old lady who is living alone to take her some food or to check on her. And it will not just be my mother sending me. You will find other people in the neighborhood are also doing something for that person. So there was that, a very strong sense of community. It's still not completely gone, mm -hmm. but it's not as strong as it was those days. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Definitely, um, we are, a, a chip of us comes mm -hmm. from the past. Yeah. And uh, uh, when we look at your life and mm -hmm. the way you've been so consistent mm -hmm. and pro Wanjiko, you know, mm -hmm. for as long as we've heard you, you've always been pro Wanjiko. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, when we see many times a person who is pro the lowly, uh, or pro, and pro the people who are, you know, on the lower side of life and who really want to grow, uh, we always say that God is on the side, you know, of the weak. So yeah. we would just want to hear from you also, uh, yeah. your spirituality. Uh, how, how is that like? I mm -hmm. was brought up as a Christian. Mm -hmm. I am still a Christian. And uh, I have my relationship with God. I may not be your typical Christian. But I have my relationship with God, mm -hmm. and uh, I work closely with uh, faith. Mm -hmm. And uh, my parents are very uh, spiritual. Mm -hmm. my, some of my sisters, my daughter is very, very uh, spiritual. Very, very. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> so there's a very and a very, very. <laughs> yeah. In fact, mm -hmm. I, I tag along with her. Yeah when she's going to church, mm -hmm. because I want to support her and her family. So mm -hmm. we go with her kids. Before Corona, mm -hmm. I was actually literally tagging along to her church, mm -hmm. because you know in Nairobi sometimes we don't take up membership. I never took up membership in Nairobi, because as a politician, you go to almost all the churches. So I just remain a member mm -hmm. of my church at home. But I go anywhere else. Okay. And lately, I've been tagging along with my daughter mm -hmm. as she goes to, to her church. Okay. That was before Corona. Yeah. Yes. I'm sure she's happy, you know, for <laughs> the mother to tag along. <laughs> and many times we don't see that face, that face mm -hmm. of the mother, you mm -hmm. know. Yeah. And uh, we see Martha, the politician, often called the iron lady <laughs> for some reasons, you know. Someone wondered why there are mm -hmm. no iron men. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, um, th that naming comes from stereotyping, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that women are expected to be this way and not that way. Mm -hmm. So if you're coming out strong, you'll be called a man, not a woman. Mm -hmm. Forgetting that the strongest people we know are our mothers. The strongest, the most resilient people we know are the mothers around us, not just our mothers, you can see in the neighborhood, even within the communities, in our churches, in the school community, the strongest drivers of the agenda for development, for positivity, will be the mothers around. Mm -hmm. But that strength is assumed. So if a woman comes strong in leadership, and especially in politics, then they want to sort of modify you, modify your gender, or call you names like you've stepped out, out of your line. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, which is something that um, contemporary politics must definitely deal with, that yeah. stereotyping. It's a journey, it's a, you know, it's a whole cultural process, but it's important that we also deal with that stereotyping, as you say. That's why, mm -hmm. from my personal space, I do what I must, irrespective of how I'm labeled. Okay. Because one way of fighting that is just not being distracted. And the more women who remain on that path, the more women become visible, the less we will hear of this. Mm -hmm. Although I'm seeing it even in the international arena, I saw um, Reuters talking of uh, Okonjo <laughs> Jawela, the Nigerian, former Nigerian finance minister, former World Bank vice president, a no-nonsense woman, mm -hmm. appointed to WTO. Mm -hmm. It took a lady on Twitter telling off Reuters and telling them, try this, former finance minister, 
former World Bank. Actually, they deleted the tweets and apologized mm -hmm. and cast it positively. Okay. You see? Yeah. So yeah. I think some of, some of this language is, mm -hmm. uh, is uh, constructed in our culture. And unless yeah. it is raised, it is... Um, um, called out. Called out. Yes. Then, and people learn from that, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and again, coming back to you and politics and being a mother, yeah. um, and we know that politics is totally demanding. It's like yeah. 25 hours, you know, in a day. Yeah. So how does that, did that dynamic of being in the you know, public political space yeah. and you being a mother, how did that play out? Let me say this. I raised my children in politics mm -hmm. because when I joined activism as a lawyer um, my children were two years and four years when i joined politics two years later they were four and six so literally i brought up my children as a politician mm -hmm. and uh, you can't say that everything is as is supposed to be because there are times your job demands will make you give your children less time I tried my best. Mm -hmm. That's all that one can do. Mm -hmm. When they were younger, I would um, bring them to my political functions. Uh, I, I remember my son used to speak the language of women's empowerment mm -hmm. because he, he would talk with me to women's meetings when I was chairing the I League hope of he still Kenya. Does speak women that empowerment voters. language. I think it went. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> it went, but mm -hmm. he will recall that his early socialization mm -hmm. was this talk about women's inclusion. So whether he practices it or not, it is in him. Mm -hmm. Because they used to come along with me in meetings. I used to take them to my harambees on weekends. Then when they grew up, they started resisting, and I thought they were being rude until I realized that they are growing and they are starting to become independent. So I'm saying tomorrow we are going somewhere and they're saying, I don't want to come. You see? Mm -hmm. So you have to start recognizing the individuality mm -hmm. that is springing out as they grow. Mm -hmm. And uh, you have to start now realizing they can't tag along. So you, I stop now going overnight and go in the morning and come back because I want to be there for them. So there is a certain amount of neglect that will occur, mm -hmm. with, even with the best intentions. Mm -hmm. You will not be able to do all the things you should do to give them all the time, but I tried the much I could to mm -hmm. give them quality time. Yeah. Yeah, so and I think uh, as a parent, uh, giving yeah. it all the best that you, that you can, that you can. That's what's required. Of yeah, us. sometimes it us. doesn't amount Mm -hmm. exactly what it should be mm -hmm. but that's it but uh, your yeah. uh, daughter is tagging you along to church <laughs> to so church. <laughs> they turned out well they turned out okay you know uh, again just before we move into um, your highs yeah. and lows in politics yeah. uh, how does your spirituality impact your kind of politics I think to a large extent it does because we try to leave the Ten Commandments without even reminding yourself every day you find you're trying to do what you would want others to do to you. So somehow, even the laws of uh, the criminal laws, generally in the entire world, you can see their foundation in the Ten Commandments. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not kill, all those things. And even the society's morality has a relationship with the Ten Commandments. Mm -hmm. So to some extent, we are not perfect. We will transgress. But that foundation, Christian foundation, does offer a moral co compass to some extent. Mm -hmm. yeah. OK. And it's, it's, um, sometimes it's pretty hidden. Uh, yeah. uh, sometimes it is outward, you know, because we have yeah. seen yeah. Uh, leaders yeah. uh, yeah. in our political circles who, are, who front, you know, mm -hmm their faith and it gets distorted sometimes because yeah. we don't know whether it's a politician yeah. or it's the religious person speaking it's again yeah. it's a bit yeah, distorted yeah. you know or whether it's pretense well that too because that it too. can also mm -hmm. be a show mm -hmm. yeah okay because i think it's not how much one says mm -hmm. that you are a christian or that you are religious is how you relate 
with people mm -hmm. that will begin to define you in the minds of others. Okay. Yeah. You know, um, staying with this area of spirituality. Yeah. In the political arena. Yeah. You've seen many seasons in this country. Yeah. And the church has always been in the mix yeah. somehow. Sometimes yeah. on the receiving end, sometimes yeah. on another end, you know. Yeah. And uh, if you were to analyze and say in your political time, you know, yeah. all the way to now, yeah. how would you describe, you know, the seasons of the church, uh, politically speaking? I think the church has gone through a cycle just like us. Because who is the church? The church is you and me. That pastor is part of the society. We are all influenced by what is going around us. And I have said earlier on, our society was rooted in our traditions. And the African tradition is very strong on hard work, on honesty, on integrity, to the extent that those who stole from others were given instant justice. Mm -hmm. Those who murdered were given instant justice. So our society did not tolerate uh, thieves. It did not tolerate uh, murderers. It did not tolerate people who had no sense of community. There were certain, it also did not tolerate rapists, by the way. It respected women to the extent they knew how. Because you never joked with somebody's daughter unless if you had serious intentions. Mm -hmm. And if you did, you might just be forced to marry them. Mm -hmm. So you can see to, the, to some extent that influence even the spirituality of the community. Today, the society has changed. And as I grew up, the church too was the moral compass of society and the voice of reason, the refuge for the downtrodden. And when we were fighting for the second liberation, I was a youth then, mm -hmm. the church was an ally. It was the strongest civil society in this country. When there was no opposition, when opposition had been outlawed, voices of religious leaders were what we could hear. And then the voice of the leadership of the Law Society. Mm -hmm. And as a youth, I became one of the leaders in the Law Society. So you can see there was, um, the church was playing its role. They were not outrightly political, but they used to call out the government, those in leadership, when they violate the rights of the people. Mm -hmm. They used to call for justice. They were the warriors for social justice. Mm -hmm. The church has since evolved. As the society is losing its moral compass, even the church has been affected. Now we see here contradictory voices. You see? And I am not saying that those days it was uniform voices, but a majority, even those who didn't speak, were sympathetic two issues of social justice. Now, as politics is moving towards becoming commercial, that people are fronting their personal interests, even religion has not been spared. Figures within religious circles are also, some of them, more interested in their personal relationships in the goodies that are being brought, even whole com church congregations are more interested in what politicians bring mm -hmm. than what they represent. Yeah. So I think the entire society, I don't want to say only the church, because the church is us. Our moral mm -hmm. compass, public morality and decency has been greatly eroded. Mm -hmm. And the voter, who is also the same religious person whether Christian, Muslim, or any other faith. The voter is -hmm. the same person within the religious circles. You know, you, you've, used yeah. a, you've used a strong word um, yeah. when you were yeah. in the scrabble for the second liberation. The yeah. word you've used was that the church was an ally. And I yeah. believe it was an ally of justice. Of justice. Now, if you were to um, 
talk about talk to the leadership of the church today you know uh, what are some of the specific things that you'd say you know for you to be um, impactful in the political zone yeah. uh, what are, these are things you must address or this is a place you must rise to you know? I would uh, ask the church to rethink mm -hmm. their stand on issues of social justice and these issues do not depend on who is the leader or who is speaking mm -hmm. is whether it's right or wrong is whether it is good for the ordinary person or oppressive and this is a time the church can be very strong because our constitutional foundation is also stronger than those days mm -hmm. our bill of rights our chapters on integrity and leadership even the management of public finances is explicit in the Constitution. It should be an easier time for the church, mm -hmm. but it is not. Mm -hmm. Because politicians have known how to lobby everybody, including the church. So the church is split down the middle. Mm -hmm. If the political divide has two sides, the church will have as many sides. If it has three, the church will have as many. And we are not saying that there is any one time there will be 100% even within the church. But I think that the, vo the church has lost its voice on social justice. Mm -hmm. Or its voice on social justice has been, I don't want, maybe lost is not the word because it's not completely absent, mm -hmm. has been diminished. Mm -hmm. The light has been dimmed. Mm -hmm. So what can we do to let the light coming from the religious mm -hmm. leaders, shine. Yeah, it's, it's interesting yeah. Um, yeah. that when the structures legally were difficult, yeah. uh, the church was a strong ally. In fact, I would say the religious because mm -hmm. also the Muslim mm -hmm. faith and sometimes the Hindu faith, the faiths were coming out strong. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Professional societies, because I shouldn't call out the church and fail to call us out as professionals. Mm -hmm. The professional societies, especially the law society of Kenya, supported by the Association of Professional Societies of East Africa, which embraced all the other professions, were strong. You see, today, you don't see that. Mm -hmm. And if it is the law society, you see push and pull within it. You know? So our society, we, have, we are literally breaking the foundations that we had, the pillars that we had. Mm -hmm. So it's a question to ask ourselves, yeah. as individuals and as a collective, yeah. what role can you play mm -hmm. to make our society better? You know, it's, yeah, you it's, know? Yeah, and to it's, return to our roots. Mm -hmm. The Constitution now says what our values are mm -hmm. in Article 10. Mm -hmm. That time they were not in the constitution, but we appeared to practice them. Mm -hmm. What is your responsibility, you and me, mm -hmm. you as a professional, you as a religious leader, you as a Kenyan in whatever space you occupy? Mm -hmm. And that's the question I ask me every morning. And I endeavor to play my part. To answer it throughout the day. Yes. You know, yeah. I endeavor mm -hmm. to play my part. Mm -hmm. And irrespective of who else is saying yes, if I require to say no, I'll say no. Even if I'm the only no, I will stand with the courage of conviction. And that's what I saw my father do okay. in his yesterday. And we'll talk about that's that. That's what I yeah. saw yeah. my maternal grandmother do. Mm -hmm. That's what I saw my mother do. And you know what, Martha? And they are all different. That's what Jesus also said. Let your yes be yes. <laughs> yes. Let your no be no. You, know? yeah, you see? Yeah, let so we can clear. practice yes. our faith without mm -hmm. even saying you're practicing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the foundation you get together is what makes the composition that is you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Um, before we go to the no, or to the BBI <laughs> and all that, yes. I would want to uh, hear also, just in a summative way, um, when you look back from yeah. where you are right now, yeah. what, are, what, what can you say has been your high in terms of what you can say as uh, Martha that this was a point of pride? 
And what would you say also this was a point of really low in terms of your uh, experience in public leadership? Let me say mm -hmm. that uh, I feel very blessed mm -hmm. and I've had very many highs. Being able to serve Kenya in my capacity as an MP for Gishoko, that's a high. Mm -hmm. You see? Being able to serve Kenya as a minister of water, later as, as a minister of justice, that's a high. Being able to rise within the ranks in political party, both in the Democratic Party, as a secretary for legal and constitutional affairs, I was elected, not nominated. Mm -hmm. Being able to rise to be the leader of NAC Kenya, I feel blessed being able to occupy those spaces, being able to champion women's rights, whether in FIDA, in the League of Kenya Women Voters, being able to champion human rights, all those are highs. Mm -hmm. But there are no highs in this world without lows. Sometimes you look back and you see missed opportunities. I remember um, when I was Minister for Justice, and uh, that was around 2007. And we were, I was tabling a bill to bring in 50 women members of parliament. Mm -hmm. Together with the IABC uh, proposals for additional constituencies. And when we went to the parliamentary group, I got incest because men were opposing it and they were asking what type of women they would bring. Mm -hmm. So if it were today rolling back, I would not, I, even though incest, I would breathe in and out and calmly make a strong explanation mm -hmm. or pitch instead of getting annoyed mm -hmm. and being just answering in a very, allowing my anger guide my answer. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you lose even the allies that you have. Mm -hmm. So there are situations like that. And uh, learning from them now in later negotiations, we use different tactics. Mm -hmm. There have been uh, laws in terms of uh, disagreements when laws that forced me to leave cabinet, mm -hmm. to sacrifice, to leave my position of influence, to leave the financial packs that it was bringing, but out of conviction I had to do. Mm -hmm. And that's a law because then you forgo that opportunity to make a difference, but that opportunity at that stage, I was not making a difference, and that's why I left. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because if your hands are tied, then I'm going to be a fraud. I'll be receiving a salary, not working. Mm -hmm. And I'll also be letting people use my name to do the things they are doing, because it will be said it's under my watch. Mm -hmm. You see? Yeah. So there's been many laws. One cannot detail all the mm -hmm, highs, mm -hmm. all the laws. There have been many laws. And even uh, campaigning for uh, presidency, uh, campaigning on issues, people not seeming to hear yet not hearing, mm -hmm. and demanding money which I wasn't giving, and therefore not being at the end of the day, you see they, they never quite heard you. You see? Mm -hmm. That was a law. Mm -hmm. Disappointing. Both women and men, because I'm told if women voted me, no leader is ever voted by one gender only. Mm -hmm. So I was disappointed by both women and, and men. men. Yeah. Having my victory stolen in 2017 was a law. Mm -hmm. Seeing the courts serve injustice rather than justice was a law. But then the verdict from the East African court, which called out the Kenyan courts for failing to dispense justice, mm -hmm. that was a high. So life balances out. Mm -hmm. yeah. And leaves you better. And leaves and you stronger. better, yes. And definitely there are more opportunities ahead. And, and there are more highs mm -hmm. and lows mm -hmm. even on the personal front. And that is life. Yeah. Yes. We'll talk about you know, your ambitions a little later. And yes. viewers, we are talking to Honorable Martha Kurua. And uh, we will be taking a short break. And when we come back, uh, she has said a strong no uh, to the proposed constitutional amendments. And we want to ask her, why not? Again, stay with us. This is Spotlight.